In 1682 in Paris, a king named King Louis shows some of the children in his palace on how to make a good speech, and they all try to imitate him. In his speech, he shows them how he plans to announce a meeting with the greatest leaders of France, which will take place in the gardens of Versailles. Meanwhile, a female builder and gardener named Sabine Barra receives a letter of invitation to the home of Monsieur Lenota for an interview for a project. Later, she heads to André Lenota's home. When she steps in front of the building, André watches her through the window as she scatters his garden arrangement, which looked too orderly to her, by moving one garden pot. When she gets in, she meets Juris, Jean Riss, and Daniel Leviel, who have also come for the same interview. When it's her turn, she is called in by Claude, André's secretary. In André's office, he requests that she immediately outline her plans for the project and avoid small talk. He asks her if she believes in order in landscape design, and she mentions that she does, but it seems like a slightly outdated idea to her. André explains that she doesn't agree with the main principle on which most of his works are based, and asks her to leave. When she steps outside, the other men laugh at the shortness of her interview. Sabine heads out angrily to go do some gardening work. After she's done, she sits on the finished work. At André's office, Claude asks him if he's made a choice. He only says he's surrounded by barbarians in his quest to fulfill the unattainable request of King Louis, which is a perfect garden, and this would lead to his death or imprisonment. Claude encourages him to give one of the builders a try. Later that night, André comes to meet Sabine, who hurries to get dressed. He decides to go through her garden to inspect the flowers. When Sabine attends to him, he tells her his father religiously taught him gardening as a work of faith. He tells her he is looking at her plans again and will get back to her. Sometime later, Sabine arrives in the gardens of Versailles, where André is working with some builders on the garden project amidst a shortage of water. André announces that Sabine will be working on rock work growth, which is a section of the garden. The builders protest that King Louis's demands are unattainable because the pipes can't carry enough water to the gardens, but André says they must since it's King Louis's demand. Later, André takes Sabine to plain land to explain the plans for the building of the ballroom. When Sabine asks why he chose her, he tells her the gardens should be large enough to embrace ideas other than his own. That night, Sabine sleeps off while working. She wakes up to the voice of a young girl but soon realizes it was a dream. That morning, she takes a rework of her plans to André at his house, while Madame Lenota watches them from above. Sometime later, Sabine and some of the laborers start working on building an orchestra in Rockwork Grove. At André's home, Madame Lenota wonders why André is ignoring her to read Sabine's plans. She condescendingly reminds him that she's the expert, and he's merely a gardener, however grand he may be. At the site, most of the laborers abandon Sabine, but she continues with her friend, Luke, working day and night, while Juris spies on her. The next day, when Sabine gets you the sight, Juris tells her that the previous crew she had were the worst, and brings some new crew members to her and offers to work for her. She informs him that one of his old friends from the interview recommended the initially terrible workers, but Juris mentions that did that because they couldn't handle losing the project, but he can. He also jokes that his wife had told him to come and ask her for a job. Sabine later tells Juris that she's been given an invitation to a royal event. When she gets there, she gets sod stares from everyone and avoids stepping into the hall where King Louis is giving his speech about the event to hold in the gardens of Versailles. She decides to roam into the dining room, but she runs into the same mysterious young girl from her dreams. Soon, the guests rush in, but one man named Don Juan helps her to a reclusive spot and explains that she's at King Louis Court, a group responsible for assisting the royal family in the exercise of its office. While he gives her a tour, he explains to her the affairs of the court and the rivalry among them. They run into André, and Aunt Juan tells André to guard her well from the vultures, referring to some of the people at the court. Meanwhile, Madame Lenota watches André walk with Sabine, while she makes out with another man. When they get out, André and Sabine joke about the vanities of life. Soon, one of André's friends, the Duke of Orleans, approaches them, along with his friend, Marquis du Vassé. Philippe seems to take a liking to Sabine. When Philippe jokingly asks what an exquisite woman like her is doing with André, she explains her profession as a gardener and builder. Soon, Princess Palatine, Philippe's wife, arrives and learns of Sabine's work in Versailles. Princess Palatine requests to see her work along with the other royals and later walks with Sabine to talk more about engineering and building. Later that night, King Louis and André have a discussion. King Louis informs him that he has learned that he is allowing a new idea in the construction of the garden, and André informs him that he's expanding his horizon. King Louis mentions that he is seeking perfection, and André will be held responsible for any mistakes made. That night, while Sabine is in her garden, the same little girl she has seen earlier runs past her and she becomes uncomfortable. At Versailles, Sabine and André take the royals through the land to inspect the destruction of some of the rocks. The explosion initially startles them, but Sabine seems to enjoy it, and André gently whispers to her that she is reckless. They all head to a small party, and Princess Palatine tells Sabine that her husband and Marquis Duvassé are lovers.
but he's a good man that loves his family. While they walk, Andre and Sabine talk. He tells her the extremities of life seem to overwhelm him sometimes, but he always seems to find some courage when he comes to a bell and like this. Sabine asks him why his wife doesn't accompany him, but he reluctantly reveals to her that they have an arrangement. She reveals to him that her husband died. While they speak, Sabine sees the little girl running through the fields again but decides to walk further away. Andre takes Sabine and the royalties to a shrine in the woods. While they inspect the shrine, Sabine and Andre closely watch each other. Soon, a man brings them the news of the queen's death. Meanwhile, Madame Lenota makes love with her secret lover and pays him for his services. At Sabine's worksite, the workers keep building. Andre comes to commend her progress, and she tells him about how Juris has been helping her. They both sit down to share food and have a conversation. As Andre is about to leave, Sabine holds his hands for a short while, then leaves before him. At the court, Philippe tries to feed King Louis, who has refused to eat. After Philippe feeds him, King Louis announces to his court that he wishes to go to Molly alone. While Sabine carries some of her flowers to Versailles, the young girl appears to her again, but soon disappears when she gets distracted by King Louis's carriage. King Louis heads to the farm of his personal garden and named Monsieur de la Quintini. He requests that Monsieur de la Quintini leave the farm while he is left alone there. Sabine runs into King Louis at the farm and mistakes him for Monsieur de la Quintini. King Louis is surprised when he sees her. As she goes through the flowers in the garden, King Louis hides his identity and requests that she shows him the flowers he brought. She mentions the book he has written on plants, still mistaking him for Monsieur de la Quintini, and he agrees. Soon, she picks up that he's King Louis from how he speaks, but he requests that she ignore all that and regard him as Monsieur de la Quintini for today. While they speak, she reveals that she's working on the rock work grove, and Andre had made a simple sketch of hers. King Louis seems to like her and accompanies her in carrying around her flowers and picking new ones. He tells her about his dead wife whom the state had chosen for him. He says she was kind-hearted and devoted to him. He also tells her he would like to marry again, but this time to someone he chooses, and not the state. When Sabine asks if he has someone in mind, he tells her he does, but she is very pious and they mostly just talk. He also mentions that she's not of royal birth, which makes it hard for him to marry her. Sabine suggests that he marries her privately, such that other people cannot argue against it since it would have already been done. King Louis asks her if someone she loves, but she says she's restricted from that because of her past. He tells her that they both have to move on from their past and says he'll always remember their time together in the garden. At Andre's home, he informs Madame Lenota that he has been summoned to Fontainebleau by the king, but he will be going alone. She mentions that she is aware of his closeness with Sabine, but she requests that he keep it separate from their lives. Andre tells her that she's responsible for how they live now, and she did it when he needed her most. She explains that she's trying to bring them back together, but he tells her she's aware of the damage she caused and that she must leave him alone. She begs him not to exclude her from his life, but he reminds her of when he begged her for the same, but she left him to seek comfort in others. After they finish work on the site, Madame Lenota approaches Sabine. She condescends to her and tells her that she's only a diversion to her husband, and she'll come and go. When Madame Lenota leaves, Sabine stands there, flustered. Later, Madame Lenota's lover informs her that they found a reservoir that they can use to flood the grove that Sabine is working on, and she tells him to do it. He immediately goes to open the reservoir and break open the pipes leading into the grove. That night, a storm begins, which worsens the situation. Sabine, Luke, and Juris try to seal the broken pipes. Sabine decides to head to the reservoir to close it. Instead, she falls into the rushing water and holds on for dear life. In the nick of time, Andre comes to close the reservoir, and he saves her. The next morning, they all stand in the ruins of the grove. Andre tells Sabine that she cannot be blamed for the reservoir gate being open or for the storm but encourages her to adapt to the current situation. She asks him if she's just an amusement to him, but he says she is not. She asks him if his intention towards her is honest, and he tells her she has always been a wonder to him. When they go out to eat, they embrace each other. As they're about to make out, Sabine says she's happy but starts to cry. She says she can't do this and leaves. When King Louis comes to the site, he questions Juris while Sabine isn't there. Juris proclaims that he believes in Sabine's design and explains that the present setbacks are due to the storm. King Louis asks Andre if Sabine's project is worthy of the royal event, and he tells her he trusts her work and that it is worthy. King Louis retorts that although all he sees is mud, he'll trust their judgment and invite Sabine to Fontainebleau. At Fontainebleau, Sabine walks with Aunt Juan. He tells her that everyone is anxious to meet her because she's managed to find her way into prestigious gatherings despite having no royal blood, but he's under strict instruction to bring her to the Marquise Montespan, the king's official mistress. When they get to the Marquise Montespan's room, she seems very excited to meet Sabine. While they speak, Princess Palatine comes to join them. The Marquise Montespan takes Sabine to a private room filled with several women who seem to have a keen interest in her. They ask Sabine about her family, and she reluctantly mentions her dead husband and daughter. 
The women all share how some of them have also lost their own husbands and children. They tell her it's fine to not be able to freely speak about it, and she tells them that she locked all their belongings in a trunk, which she has never opened since. The women tell her it's okay, and that she can do that when she is strong enough. They all head out to meet King Louis. Sabine remembers the king's favorite flower and goes out to hand him one. Due to her liking for King Louis, the Marquise Montespan requests to hand King Louis the flower, but King Louis seems unimpressed by her, referring to her as a fading rose. Sabine, with a figure of speech, tells King Louis that all roses eventually fade, slowly losing their beauty to the harsh assault of nature. But that is the beauty of a rose. King Louis understands her message and asks her to walk with him to tell him about the progress in the garden. When they walk away, the Marquise de Montespan is surprised by Sabine's kindness. That night, André goes to meet Sabine, and they passionately make love. When it's morning, André wakes up alone in bed and hurries to find Sabine. Meanwhile, at her home, Sabine opens up the trunk where she kept her husband's clothes and her daughter's toy while crying. She remembers the last time she saw her husband, Philippe Barra, before he left with their daughter on a journey. Before he leaves, he informs her that he has a mistress and promises to return that evening. Outside, one of their workers, Jean, tells Philippe that the carriage's wheel is bad, but Philippe doesn't listen. When Sabine learns that Philippe Barra is heading to Berry, where his mistress is, she realizes that he may be taking their daughter away permanently. She hurries to the front of the moving carriage, which startles the horses. The horses abruptly change direction, causing the wheel to break and the carriage to roll over a cliff. In the present day, Sabine screams due to the shock of the memory. André finds her mumbling to herself about how she killed her own daughter. He pulls her out of her torment and tells her that all the pain she has gone through is enough and that there is no use for blame. He asks her how he can help her, and she tells him to hold her. While they hold each other, Sabine asks him what will happen to his wife. He tells her this was not how his marriage started, but his wife will live her own life. When she asks what will become of them, he tells her that they will shape each other and build a new future. Months later, in the completed gardens of Versailles, Sabine walks into the orchestra with King Louis. As they step in, the odd but beautiful fountains gush out water, which pleases King Louis and his court. Moments later, they all start to dance in the open ballroom. King Louis dances with Sabine for a while and hands her to André. André takes Sabine outside, and they make out. How scandalously romantic. What did you guys this of this movie? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.